Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I thought I would share with you my top tips and tricks and pieces of advice on how you can always have something to wear and look chic on a budget. I do want to preface this video and say that looking chic is entirely subjective. So this will be my interpretation of what it means to look chic. So without further ado, let's get in to the video. Now I have written down all of my notes in my notebook. First up, and my number one tip to always having something to wear is to invest in good quality, well-fitting basics. I'm sure there are many of you that can relate to having loads of clothes but nothing to wear. And that's usually because a lot of those items can either only be worn in their own right, on their own, or they don't fit you properly. You want items that are gonna make you feel amazing when you wear them. And that's why it's so important to find pieces that are flattering, that you genuinely want to wear, but also that you find easy to style. So let me show you the three items that I find are just a fail safe when it comes to creating outfit combinations. They're chic, they're wearable, you don't need to spend a fortune on them. And I'm also gonna show you in the cutaways different combinations on how you can style these up. Now when I'm getting dressed, I always start with a foundation of an outfit. I start with my basics. Once I've got my basic foundation set, I then build on it to make the outfit more interesting, whether that's adding earrings, a blazer, jewelry, things like that. Now everybody's idea of basics is going to vary. However, the basics that I find myself wearing pretty much every day or every week are the following. A good pair of wide legged trousers. I have these in so many colors. I'm wearing a pair today in navy. I've got a white pair here. I do like to stick to my more neutral colors. I'll talk about colors in a minute. Now, if you're looking for recommendations on good wide legged trousers, I highly, highly recommend the brand that I'm wearing today. These are by a brand called Halara, and what they've done is really clever. Their trousers look just like suit trousers, but they're actually in a sport-like material. They don't look it, but they are so comfortable. Look how stretchy these are. Maybe someone like me that wants to look really chic and elegant, but also wants to be super comfortable and practical. I highly, highly recommend these. They come in lots of different colors. I've got navy, white, they come in black and other neutrals. But for me personally, a wide leg trouser is an absolute must when it comes to building the foundations of my wardrobe. Next up, when it comes to your basics, another item you'll notice I wear all the time is a really chic and elegant, simple vest or t-shirt. Now the reason I like these is because they are comfortable, they're practical, they cover a good proportion of your body so that you still feel relatively modest, but they're absolutely brilliant for layering. Today I've got on a little white vest, but I also have vests in all different colours. There's nothing fancy about them, but that's what's great. It's all about starting simple and then building on the outfit. That's going to be the difference of having something that looks chic and something that looks a little bit busy. Again, the brand I'm recommending for these is Halara as well for a couple of reasons. Not only are these super stretchy, they've also got an inbuilt bra. I'm wearing one today and having bra straps on show is never elegant. So it's always good if you can to have a built in bra, particularly when it comes to a strappy top like this. And then the third item that I consider a basic is a blazer. Pretty much all of my outfits are built up of wide leg flats, so trousers, a simple top, and a statement shoulder padded blazer. And there are just so many outfits you can make using that combination of three. One of my biggest style inspirations is the Princess of Wales, and she very, very often uses this format of dressing. What's great about it is, if you are somebody that becomes overwhelmed really quickly, and you just want to wake up and know that you've got a tried and tested format that always looks chic, it's comfortable, it's easy, this is what I recommend. And this combination doesn't need to be boring. There are so many ways to make your outfits look fun, playful, tell the story of who you are, but it doesn't need to be complicated. Number two, and now that we've discussed creating a foundation for an outfit, let's talk about color. Now, generally there are two rules that I use when it comes to color. I either do an outfit of maximum three colors, or I love to do tonal monochromatic dressing. And this is something that you'll see done very often by the Royals, by people like Victoria Beckham, who I love. So the colors that I personally love to wear and that I feel most comfortable in are the following. I love black and white. I love navy. I love tan. 
by sticking to a smaller color palette, what it does is it enables me to really get the most out of my wardrobe. It enables me to mix and match everything really, really easily. And I only started doing this a couple of years ago. Before that, I had so many different colors in my wardrobe. I was always overwhelmed. I would go to my wardrobe and nothing seemed to go together, which was crazy because I had so many clothes, but nothing was matching. So not only does it make it easier for you to formulate outfits, but it also makes it easier for you to shop. So I like to make my outfits either in trios of colours or I really love to do monochromatic dressing. I just think it is such a sophisticated and really aesthetically pleasing way to dress and it's really easy because you don't need to think about if it goes. It does go because it's all the same colour. And what's nice about tonal dressing is you can be a little bit more playful with your colour choices. If you don't just want to wear black and white and I appreciate some people find it a little bit boring, that's absolutely fine. You can still look really chic and smart and put together in bright colours or fun funky colours if you go for the monotone approach. Number three, now if you are ever struggling with formulating an outfit together, you're just not sure if it's working, one of the methods that I've recently come across which I really like is something called the sandwich method. It has been a recent trend and I can see why and it's something that works for both men and women. Let me explain how it works. So if you think of a sandwich you've got the top piece of bread, the bottom piece of bread and then the filling. This is the exact same formula when it comes to the sandwich method when you're dressing. So you'd pick a colour for your top half you would then match that colour somewhere in your bottom half, whether it's your shoes, your trousers, your handbag. And then the middle section, you could add in your filling, which could be a different colour. And again, this just goes to show that having a variety of those really fantastic staples in your wardrobe enables you to play around in so many different combinations. It's so easy to do, and it just looks and feels put together and cohesive. Next up, and we've talked about your classic staples quite a lot. So I'm going to move on now to adding a little bit of pattern and excitement into your outfits, but doing it in a chic and affordable way. Now you'll know by now that I like to mix my first hand fashion with my second hand fashion. I think this is the best way to shop, it keeps you creative, it's a much more cost effective way to shop, and it enables you to really play around with your style. So if you are looking to incorporate texture, pattern into your outfits, my recommendation is to stick to your more classic patterns. And I've got some examples here. I love a houndstooth print. I think this is so timeless, so chic. I'm actually wearing a print today that I really love, more of a checkered style print. And of course, you'll know I love stripes. But this also includes things like your classic polka dots, large floral prints. And all you need is just one element of that paired with your classic staples. And immediately you've got an interesting outfit that still looks really, really put together. Just because you're sticking to staples in your wardrobe, doesn't mean you need to look boring and dress all in beige. You can still absolutely pack a punch and show off your personality. Generally, I like to incorporate my prints either through a coat or a jacket or using a handbag. Something small that can be very, very easily added rather than buying my everyday basics in really bold prints because as I say, this makes it a little bit more hard to style and if you are looking for that everyday ease, knowing that you've got something super, super wearable, this is what I have found works for me. Next up, let's talk about accessories because this is a huge, huge part of elevating your outfits and creating dimension. And again, you don't need to spend and loads on high quality accessories. I buy a lot of my accessories secondhand on places like Vinted, eBay and charity shops. And generally speaking, I like to opt for one piece of statement jewelry in each outfit. For me, it tends to be a statement pair of vintage earrings, but it could be a statement necklace, it could be a statement belt. You don't need to spend hundreds on your accessories to get really high quality. These here I bought on eBay about a year ago. They're vintage Dior. I paid under £100 for them. And my general rule of thumb when it comes to buying items in general is the £1 per wear rule. So if I know that I'm going to wear something 100 times, I'm happy to part with £100. If I'm buying a pair of shoes that cost me £50, I need to know that I'm going to wear them at least 50 times. And of course, wearing it more than 50 times is the idea. But when I'm evaluating whether I think something is worth the money, I always, always ask myself that. So for me, when it comes to looking chic and elegant, less is more. You don't need to have loads and loads of jewellery to have impact. All you need really is one or two pieces of really beautiful, high quality, chic pieces of jewellery. And this is how you can add dimension to all of your outfits. 
Some of my favourite styles of jewellery are statement gold and silver vintage earrings. I love classic pearls, of course. A good watch, again, you don't need to spend loads of money on a good watch. This here is by Seconda. It's under £60. It looks like it's super high-end. I always get people asking me if it's Cartier. It's not, but it looks like it could be. And by the way, everything I mentioned in this video today, I will be linking below for you. Another accessory, which is an absolute must, which you don't need to spend loads on. Again, you can buy them secondhand, you can buy them on sale, or you can invest in one really good pair of sunglasses. And I love my classic styles of sunglasses. So I've got here a really fantastic pair of plain black sunglasses. They match pretty much everything. I also love a good tortoiseshell. Such a classic print. And I would go as far to say that tortoiseshell is actually a neutral. I never leave the house without sunglasses. I do feel like a pair of sunglasses can really complete a look. And not to mention they do actually serve a purpose, which is protecting your eyes from the UV rays. Next up, and this isn't about your clothing, but it is related to how you look in general. And that's your personal grooming. Now, when it comes to hair, nails, and makeup, this is not an area to overlook, as these are the types of things that will play in to your overall look, feel, how you come across. So when it comes to your hair, simple, natural styles absolutely are the way to go. And you don't need to spend hundreds to look fantastic. I do my hair every day with this hot brush. I like it to have a little bit of volume in it. I actually have naturally very frizzy hair. So I take a lot of time to try and get it as frizz free as possible. It's not quite perfect, but I do my best. This tool I highly recommend. It's really affordable. It's under 50 pounds. It's a hot brush. There are lots out there. I'll link this one below if you're interested. And it just gives it this really nice kind of bouncy blow dry effect look. Of course, if you are using heat on your hair, make sure to use a heat protectant. I use this one here, which is the Beauty Works Miracle Spray. It's amazing. It makes your hair feel really soft. It's actually a 10 in one spray that eliminates frizz, nourishes, replenishes oil, detangles, protects from heat. Really, really important to use something like this. When it comes to makeup, I think going for a more natural glam is always best. If you are somebody that likes to wear makeup like I am, I try to go for more natural colors when it comes to doing my makeup. I always wear this shade of lipstick. It's MAC Myth. It's very, very peachy pink. I use natural eyeshadow colors on my eyes, such as browns and bronzers. And the same applies to my nails. I like to keep them as natural looking as possible. So I go for pinks, skin tone colors, and French manicure every now and then too. And when it comes to your hair, nails, and makeup, you can do all of these from home. You don't need to go get them professionally done if you don't want to. I will admit, I do get my nails done professionally. They do such a better job than I ever would. But of course, if you are on more of a budget, you can easily file them to a nice length at home and give them a good paint of your favorite polish color. Next up, and it's about something that you wear, but not something that you can see, and it's got to be your signature scent. Now, I'm a huge perfume lover, so I have quite a lot of perfumes, but I do have some signature scents that I always wear for certain occasions. Here are a couple of my favorites. This is a classic. I know that a lot of you will probably know exactly what this smells like. And I wear this as more of a casual smell. This is the Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. It's a timeless classic. I absolutely love it. Now, if I'm wanting to smell a little bit more sexy, a little bit more seductive, I do love the YSL Libre perfume. This has a very playful and seductive element, in my opinion. So I wear this on evenings out, on dates, things like that. On the days when I want to smell really elegant, really high-end, I always go for this one. This here is Delina by Parfum Tamale. The most expensive of the three, but it is worth every penny. In fact, I might actually put a little bit on now. Oh, you just cannot beat this smell. I will say it's probably a little bit of a divisive one. I can imagine not everybody loves it. I absolutely do love it. So if you ever get a chance to smell it, definitely, definitely give it a go. Let it sit on the skin for a bit. You may not love it right away, but this is my ride or die. Another tip and a little bit of a housekeeping rule when it comes to just generally what you're wearing. Always consider, are my shoes, bags and sunglasses clean? Give them a little clean before you put them on. Always check, do I need to quickly give my outfit a steam? One thing I particularly like about the Halara trousers and a lot of their clothing is none of it needs steaming. Because it's all in this really stretchy sport like material it never ever needs steaming. So if you are somebody that's a little bit time poor, definitely consider the fabrics that you're buying if you don't want to spend your whole life steaming and ironing. 
but it's these little details that will play into whether or not you look chic and sophisticated versus not. It's that little extra two or three minutes that you spend quickly wiping the grease off your sunglasses lens, wiping the bit of mud off your trainers. I know these things aren't always easy to do, particularly maybe if you've got a family to look after or you're in a rush, but if you are trying to emulate that chic overall look to your outfit, these are the types of little things that will make all the difference. And my final rule, and this is particularly for if you want to look more chic and elegant, is my rule of top and bottom. And what I mean by that is, if I'm wearing something tight on my top half, I will wear something more loose and baggy on my bottom half and vice versa. So if I'm wearing some tighter trousers or a tight skirt on my bottom half, I will opt for something a little bit more loose fitting on the top. What I'm wearing today is a perfect example. I've got a relatively tight little top on, but my trousers are wide legged. And this is just a general rule that I find not only looks better and more sophisticated, but it actually is much more comfortable as well. And I'm all about looking good, but still being practical and able to just do my day to day without having to worry whether I'm gonna be uncomfortable and wishing I'd worn something different all day. The same also applies for things like dresses and skirts. So if I'm wearing a mini skirt, the chances are I will wear a long sleeve top. This dress is a great example. It's a mini dress. You absolutely can't go wrong with a little black dress. But when it comes to wearing this, the chances are I will wear this either with a jacket to cover my top half while my legs are out or I'll opt for some knee-high boots so that I've covered the majority of the bottom half while my top half is majority out. And as I say, there is nothing wrong if you choose not to do that. This is just my interpretation of what looks a little bit more elegant and chic. So those there were some of my tips on how you can always have something to wear, always look chic, but without breaking the bank. Everything that you've seen me wear today, I will have linked below if it's available to buy. I really hope you enjoyed this different style of video. Let me know your thoughts. And if you are interested in luxury for less shopping tips, style tips in general, make sure to subscribe to my page and I will see you again in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.